everyone, Cobra here. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we've got the latest patch notes for Soul Mask. We've got a few big changes and a lot of other changes that they have made. So I'm going to do my best to get through them and let you know what's going on in a timely manner here. So stay tuned. There's some things you're definitely going to want to know. So starting first, they have adjusted the difficulty of monsters in the volcano and snow areas and the difficulty of the five major bosses on Doom difficulty. Now this is to improve the overall difficulty progression in the game. There's not as steep of, you know, an incline. Should be a little bit easier for us, which is an awesome one. They've also increased the drop multiplier for the five major bosses and elite animals in multiplayer battles. In the background right now, you're seeing me solo fighting this Sabertooth, and then I will do it with a duo partner. Now, we do have the rates a little bit elevated, so you guys will not be getting quite as many of these as we were getting. However, notice the jump from what I got solo versus when what I got duo. It at least doubles all of the items, meaning that is very nice that they increased that drop multiplier. And that was just with two people. I'm sure it gets even better with more. Um, in addition to that, they've also reduced the aggro transfer from plunderers and outcasts towards players. They will not get... They will not transfer their aggro to you uh, as frequently, you know, if they're already aggroed onto something else. In addition, they've increased the bonus for kill XP when fighting higher level creatures. A level 10 boar no longer gives you the same amount of XP as a level 50 boar, which actually gives you incentive to fight higher level enemies, which is pretty awesome. In addition to that, they increased the stamina recovery speed by 100%. We now have double stamina recovery. And to make it even better, the stamina recovery wait time has been halved from one second to half a second. So you now have double the stamina recovery and half the wait time in between using your stamina and getting it back. Which now makes that way better for us. No more having to worry about stamina all the time. Now we should be able to get it back much easier. Uh, they also increased the output speed of honey and bee wax and beehive output is influenced by the automated production bases output multiplier. Uh, so then some gameplay and function adjustments. Mounts come in different qualities that feature different speeds. So I believe in the last patch, you could start seeing that mounts had different qualities and different stats. Well, now that quality actually affects the speed. No more having all the same 100%, you know, they're the exact same speed. Now you can get 101, 102, 103, and higher percent speed on these, so you can actually get around even faster, especially if you have the higher rarity mounts. Uh, in addition to that, some changes for solo private server mode, jaguars and snow leopard cubs. Um, you can adjust the quality coefficient, um, make that a little easier for you. They also changed the initial three masks, the Civilization, Conquest, and Rich masks, so their mimicry abilities can become usable right after the node is repaired, which is pretty awesome. Um, also, in solo private servers, you can adjust the HP, attack, and defense coefficients of creatures. So if you are playing solo or on a private server and you're having some trouble, you can now adjust that. Uh, the Craftsman's Bench no longer requires iron wire. Sharp fangs can be used to replace horns in repairing bronze shoes. And another really cool one, um, they removed the setting that made the character die instantly instead of entering near-death status when taking deadly damage to the head. So if you get headshotted, you're not going to die instantly anymore. You will still you'll go into near-death status like it should have been, which is awesome. No more getting one-shotted with a headshot. Um, when people invade your base, they will no longer use grease tanks. The refresh rate or refresh rule of the holy relic chest has been changed. So even if someone goes offline in that room, the chest will still refresh. You'll be able to get it. So people will not be able to stop uh, other people from farming that, which is pretty awesome. I guess that was a problem happening on some servers. Um, now when you're in Rainforest Ruins, the hatred passing distance of plunderers has been reduced. Uh, they won't do it from quite as far to attack you. In multiplayer battles, drop rate has increased. Um, for not just the bosses, but also for elite animals. So for jaguar, elite jaguars, elite crocodiles, things like that. So you can get more materials when fighting those as well. 
Um, and then now another really cool one when you're getting the specimen, the head of the different bosses at the different difficulty levels, it now gives you a slightly different head. So when you hang them on your trophy wall, you can now show off that you have all the different difficulties there instead of just the one. Um, some experience optimizations, the keep advancing function or the keep walking function now has turned into the dash automatically. Uh, use your dash whenever you have the stamina, I believe. Rain can now wash off feces and the ignition effect. So if you have either of those effects, you're on fire or you're covered in feces, you can now get washed off by rain instead of having to actually go submerge yourself in water, which is pretty cool. Um, when you're in combat with deployed tribesmen, the tribesmen will now attack even if in assist mode. Uh, you no longer have to put them in aggressive. They won't just stand there. If they're in assist, they'll actually help out, which is pretty cool. Um, they also added a few different sound effects and battle music, like for Snow Mountain Plunderer Leader, there's some battle music, and there's new uh, reflection, like when you block an attack, there's a new sound effect for that as well. Uh, they also fixed a couple of bugs, like one where when you try and do a jump slash attack, it triggers a basic attack. But another really good one, when the Anacondas now have been slightly nerfed, uh, the wind-up time for the Anaconda has increased, and the hit-stop time has been shortened. So the Anaconda now has a less of a window that they will be able to actually hit you with the grab attack. And it now has an increased cooldown time to 8 seconds, so they can't use that quite as frequently. Hopefully that will reduce the amount of bugs, because uh, I know those were really buggy before. I'm sure there'll still be some, but hopefully that reduces some. Um, other than that, when uh, cats are now attacking you from behind, like a jaguar, snow leopard, etc., lions as well, um, when they pounce on you from behind, their follow-up attacks will not be as frequent uh, because they can dismount you. So now hopefully that means that they won't kill you in one hit when they dismount you, uh, which would be a really big improvement there. They added a couple of quality life things, like a button to revert the queue to the planned queue when doing the loop setting. Um, diseases can no longer be contracted multiple times by the same character, which is pretty cool. They increased the collection output of monkeys. I know that a lot of us have had problems where our monkeys were producing almost nothing. Now that has been increased, so hopefully they will produce more than nothing. Um, six types of storage boxes now support stacking and no longer occupy individual slots in the player's inventory. You don't have to have your whole inventory full of slots because you're trying to make chests, they now stack, which is pretty cool. Uh, when items are dropped, they only merge into the previous owner's bag. So if I drop stuff and my friend drops stuff, they're not going to go into one bag. They're going to go into two separate ones, which makes it a little easier to sort things. Um, some crowding issues were fixed with tribesmen, and some spawn positions were changed in large camp ruin bosses. Um, random invasion monsters no longer spawn near player-built constructions. And there have been a few adjustments made to fishing traps um, in regards to construction space, capture efficiency, and the number of catches. Because I guess there were some problems where people were uh, affecting the server performance due to the excessive use of traps to gather ridiculous amounts of fish. Uh, in addition to that, tactical guidance has been changed. Reconnaissance now increased deploys, deployed tribesmen's HP by additional 100%. Fallout attack now increases deployed tribesmen attack by an additional 50%. Positional defense, uh, defense by 50%. And emergency mobilization now triggers at 5% damage taken instead of 50 and has been adjusted to restore 50% of damage taken rather than 5% of max HP, which is really awesome. Nature's Enlightenment got a few buffs uh resilience increased by 10 instead of five animals you summon last five minutes in sorry 10 minutes instead of five and there's more types of animals and then a few bugs such as a chance for the boss to actually disappear in solo or friends mode has been fixed uh drop pack or death packages now appear at the player's feet after resurrection they don't fall through the ground anymore um now you should be able to, you shouldn't be able to get stuck in walls when teleporting out of the dungeon. Um, 
The C key no longer triggers mimicry if that is changed. I guess some people were having an issue where even after they rebound their keys when they hit C, it would still trigger mimicry. That has been fixed. A few formula errors for things such as medium costumes and gloves were changed. Um, a few of the traps have been fixed as well. And a few translations. Um, but those are the majority of the changes in this update. Um, I'm going to include the link in the description below of the actual full update list for any of you to see. If you have any questions, please let me know below in the comments. Um, any suggestions for future videos, please let me know below. I'm always happy to answer questions and to help you guys out with more videos. And then please like and subscribe. Give me support for the channel. I'll keep producing these videos for you. And I will see you guys next time.